this video lesson. Now, in earlier lessons, we spoke about the planning approach. I suggested that it is an important tool and that it also should be used practically. Also, we should not be intimidated by it being complicated and deep and all. You know, with practice, it becomes more and more easy to do a positional breakdown, find the positive and negative imbalances for both sides, and come up with an overall plan. Now, usually in a practical over-the-board game, it is impossible to play it to perfection, and that's where the so-called small plan comes in. Now, in this video, I want to take a look at the process of the planning approach again, and how small plans can make life easy. Okay, we're going to look at a position that I played on chess.com during the spring of 2009. My opponent was someone nicknamed Davut Duisal, and I was playing the white pieces. In this position, my opponent had played rook e8, and maybe this is already the losing move, since white now really seizes a positional initiative. Okay, now um, let's not do all the previous steps. I will uh, give you for free the orientation on the position, and I will state that the nature of the position is strategical, so that we need the planning approach to go about this position and try and find the right moves, etc. etc. Okay, well, as you may know, the planning approach starts with doing a positional breakdown. So that's exactly what I'm going to ask you to do. Do a positional breakdown, which means find the positive and negative imbalances for both sides. And just to remind you, you can think, of course, of material, you can think of king safety, you can think of piece activity, you can think of the control of files, ranks and diagonals, you can think of all kinds of matters of pawn structure, such as space, a weak pawns, strong pawns, pawn majorities, free pawns, etc., etc. And um, last but not least, you can also think about the differences between uh, minor pieces, pairs of minor pieces, etc, etc. So, just do your tactical breakdown. I will pause the video and then uh, we will come back and we will compare answers. Okay. Okay, let's come back and compare answers. Now, if we look at material, we can see that material is even. Both sides have three uh, excuse me, six pawns, and also both sides have two rooks and one bishop, right? So, no imbalances there, I would say. Well, then let's skip on to uh, possible imbalance number two, the difference between minor pieces or pairs of minor pieces. Well, I suppose there is a difference, because this minor piece is from the white squares, and this minor piece is from the dark squares. So, we have the famous opposite colored bishops here. Um, now normally this means that there is a, a big tendency for the game to peter out into a draw. However, there are also still some rooks on the board. And um, if we have some, some other extra attacking pieces on the board, then this normally means that if it is possible somehow to launch an attack on the opponent's king, for instance, and make use of the extra uh, light piece, then in some cases it means that the attacker is playing with an extra piece. For instance, if white were uh, to attack here on the king side, then he would have his two rooks and the bishop of the light squares, and the bishop of the black squares would not be able to uh, defend against an attack on these white squares. Of course, uh, all the circumstances for an attack on uh, the king side would need to be there, but this is always something to keep in the back of your mind. Normally, when you have bishops of opposite side colors, um, there is a big tendency for the game to draw, but it could also go the other way, and. Uh, 